welcome to Dynamite the Light, a episode that is just unknown. Now, I had to say it in disrespect because the way the show went, it was very vague. We have no idea what's going on. It's unknown. That's the best way to say it. An unknown future for AEW doing what they've done. Now, what do we get in this show? We got a lot of content, and I'm not going to cover absolutely everything here. I'm, I'm going to be honest, I'm going to forget something. Or I, most of the time when I forget something, and I do tend to forget things on and off on my videos, it's mainly due to the fact I really want to wait and see. And a lot of times I frustrate myself to the point where I forget. <laughs> That's just how I am. So if I do miss something, I am sorry, but I'm, I think I'd rather leave it and then see what happens next week when they expand on it. Now, opening Bucks versus TW2, Hybrid 2. Honestly, I don't know why they even got the match. I'd rather have seen the acclaim than see the Hybrid 2. Because when it came down to when the match happened, it wasn't a bad match. But I did not see them even getting close to having a chance to go after the titles. If they won that match, they would have a title shot. And I thought, if they won that, what happened to the ranking system? And they're not going to do that. So I didn't expect them to win there. And they did not. And the Bucks won. Now, the question is going to be, what is the situation with the claimed? What are they going to be doing with the Bucks? And they have to go for SCU first. Because after it was all said and done, the acclaim came out, SCU saved them, and now next week they're going to have a match with them. So there's going to be a question right there. The next match, which unfortunately I lost some of the stream at the very end. And this six-man tag, I'm getting it done now. Butcher, Blade, and Kingston versus the Lucha Bros, as well as Lance Archer. What happened to Pac? Now, either there was some type of situation with him because I didn't hear it. Or they left him out of it. Maybe he's going after the TNT title or there might have been some situation. I don't know. It wasn't the fact that the match was bad. Pentagon Gene was taken out pretty early because they got beat. All three of them got beaten up early. They started fighting early. So Pentagon got taken out early. He was taken to the back. Hurt his, hurt his left, what was it, his right leg. So the question is going to be, where do they go with Lance Archer as well as Kingston? Because I don't know who won. My guess is Lance Archer lost and Kingston either pinned Ray. My guess is Ray Phoenix got pinned and it might have been Kingston who did it because I didn't see that part. I lost the stream. My internet has been kicking on and off for the last couple of days. And then my internet went down for about two minutes and then came right back up. So, it's just something's been going on in this area. So, I don't know who won. But my guess is Kingston lost. No, not Kingston lost. Kingston won, Archer lost. So, where they going? I don't know. It's an unknown. Now, Taz had a little line. A little, a, a, a little moment, if you will, with his new team, including... Um, Hook, his son was there. So, they're trying to set this up that, you know what, we are ready, we are here, we're going to kick ass. And this kind of lines up with what they did with the video package of Derby Allen. Well, not Derby Allen's video package, more his movie. Because he's one of the best people I've seen outside the WWE who makes vid packs look like movies. His segment looks like a movie. And this time he's in front of a psychologist. And they're showing the ink blots. And he's asking, what are these things here to you? And I like that. That was something you don't see every day. You don't see someone trying to extract themselves with ink blots. Of course, when they showed Sting's ink blot, it was not boring. It was something. FTR versus the Varsity Blondes and... Brian Pillman Jr. He got pinned. Now, let me sink this in. Let me let me sink this into you. MLW had Brian Pillman for many years. And I felt that he really needed more seasoning. 
here he did a good job in the ring. I do not know if he can do a good job when it comes to video packages, video segments, promos. I don't know. This is totally different from MLW. I've seen him do an MLW and it was not bad, but he still needed seasoning. I don't know if he's improved since the last time I seen MLW, which is maybe two and a half to near three years ago. The question here is, what are they going to do with the Varsity Blondes? Are they going to let them be on Dynamite more? Or this is a one-off? Because maybe they see the same thing as me, that they're not ready. I don't know. But I wasn't surprised that FTR won here. They had to win. And the little vid pack, well, not vid pack. I guess it was like a vid pack. Because the interview was really setting up for what it means to be FTR. Pretty much the four horsemen equivalent. But with three people instead of four. They're going to have to pick a fourth person sooner or later. It's not going to be. And this is what I'm thinking. I don't know if anyone else is going to see this or think this. Because Brian Pillman Jr. got his ass whooped by FTR. They weren't gentle to him. They whooped his ass. My guess is this. Brian Pillman Sr. was in the Four Horsemen at one point. And my feeling is this. They're going to bring in someone that's raw, that needs to be built up and grown. And my guess is Brian Pillman Jr. will fit that bill. Yes, he's going to probably go for the Varsity Blondes for a little while longer. But my guess is they're going to bring him in. Next couple of weeks, they're going to... They, I really do believe they might bring in Brian Pillman Jr. into the group and make the new horseman with Brian Pillman's son. That's what I think might happen here. I could be wrong. You guys tell me below. Now, we did not, hmm, how can I say this? When it comes to Avalon, she is different. She's a more aggressive version of Soo Young. And I think that's kind of coming off a little too hard. Not that I don't mind it. But it's like they're playing off Su Young, but in a lot more vicious form. And it might be overproduced. Now, she does seem to have some level of ability. Some. She still seems like she's greenish. I would rather see Su Young in that position. Or a Rosemary than an Abalon. That's just me. You guys tell me below. But Abalon doesn't seem to be bad. But... When the match was over and she started beating up Price. And you see Sheeta coming with the candlestick. Scared and reluctant to go in. But she does go in. She whacks her in the face. And when she's trying to take Price out of the ring. She sits up. She's not like an Undertaker. She's not like a Sue Young. And she's definitely not like a Rosemary. Who just seems to be really good at doing that. She still seems green. She feels green. She seems green. And for me personally, it's not a bad thing with Avalon, but I just don't see her in a very high position. I just don't. Now, this was one of three segments they had on the show. Second segment is when they brought in Shaq. And he got the chance to talk along with Brandy Rose. And they were trying to build something up between Brandy and Jade. I'm, I'm, I really don't want to see anything with Brandy and Jade. I don't. And then you see that Shaq is not. He's in my face. He's just. He acted timid there. And he acted like, well, I'm not interested in fighting anybody. I love, I love Cody. I love you, but. And that's Jade. She's doing it all on her own. I know Jade. But she's doing it herself. You two should settle that next week. And oh, along with that, maybe Jade could teach you a couple of things. And when that happened, I figured, oh, she's going to do something to him. And she did. She threw something in his face. Either beer or water. My guess it was looked like beer. But what what is Shaq doing there? If he's not interested in going after Cody, because the way he acted, he acted nonchalant. Maybe this is a ploy to trick Cody 
or really he doesn't really care and this is about Jade only. I don't know yet. It's an unknown. Now, hmm, the Dark Order moment with Dustin and also the Dark Mo Order moment when it came to Adam Page. Dark Order dealing with Page. Why? why I'm, I'm not saying it's bad, but you got two goofballs trying to work with Adam Page, which some people say it's perfect because Adam Page can be duped, and it seems like he is being duped. And then you see what's going on with Dustin dealing with 10, and 10's impressive, but he didn't win there. And then you see Evil Uno coming out and trying to convince a Dustin to become number 7 of the Dark Order, and he gets whacked in the face. I think the problem I have is that they both had these segments on the same show. And I really believe one should have had on one show, one should have had on the other show. So in other words, this could have been about Dustin. And then next week, you could have done something with Paige like that. And then a week after that, you could have had the match. Seeing both of them at the same time, just for me personally, I don't agree with it because... It, you could say Dark Order is making moves easily, but there's no Brody Lee. It's only Evil Uno. And they tried to sponsor Brody Lee as the head of Dark Order when it's really Evil Uno. And now we see Evil Uno, but it doesn't feel right. You should see Brody Lee. There should have been a video package of Brody Lee. There should have been something of Brody Lee. That's if he's still the leader of the Dark Order. That's just me, you guys, tell me below. The inner circle moment. We wonder if they're going to quit. No. We all knew they weren't going to quit. But it was made very clear with this long-winded segment, which I did enjoy it. One, Chris and everybody else watched Dynamite, unlike the WWE, which is flat-out stupid. They don't have brains in their head to look at their own product. Two, Ortiz tried to be peacemaker because Santana is there, ain't there. He's pissed off. He doesn't want nothing to do with it. And he's trying to make it right. Telling Sammy Guevara, shake his hand. Be the better man because you know you are. And Sammy Guevara saying, if one more incident happened, he's gone. This is what I said. Tell me I'm wrong. That Sammy Guevara was going to break away. And also, I still say this. I know no one else is saying this. I truly believe Sammy Guevara is going to work with Matt Hardy. Not in a feud, but joining Matt Hardy. And working with Matt Hardy. And Matt Hardy molding a Sammy Guevara. I do believe this. But this is just me. Now. We had the Kenny and Don segment. Hmm. They repeated what they did on Impact. Most of it. The only thing they didn't do is change out the nameplate. They basically repeated what they said on Impact. They just uh, stated it and then elaborated on more of what it they... Well, they're my face. Let me, let me give it to you in this respect. You have to repeat what's on Impact because it is a different word. Well... Actually, it is in a different audience. Because most of the same people in AEW is also an impact. That's the truth. So, repeating what they said was not 100% bad. Elaborating more on it is okay. But just like what happened with Sting, and I will get to that in a moment, nothing was covered on if Kenny's going after the TNT title, or going after the Impact title, or going after the R... Uh, well, not RH, but basically NWA title. It, we don't know anything. Or New Japan, for that matter. It's all open-ended, completely unknown. That's what they made this about. Not knowing what's about to happen. Leaving it as vague as possible, which I'm alright with. And that leads us to Sting. And Tony Giovanni being so enthusiastic to see Sting. Sting. He's in my face. 
Next to Tony being mad about the last segment that I just spoke of, he was excited about this segment and screaming at Sting because Sting wanted him to scream it because he was so happy to see him. Seeing Cody in the ring and hearing Sting say, hey, it's cool. I'm glad to see you, but you know this isn't about you, you know. Even though Cody said, I'm glad you're here. And I've been waiting a long time for you in this ring. That was good. Sting did exactly what Kenny did, leaving it open-ended, incredibly, incredibly vague on what is going on. We don't know what we're dealing with when it comes to Kenny Omega and Don Collis or Sting. We have no idea what's going on. We don't know where they're going with it. And in many cases, I'm all right with that. I'm sure many people are not going to be all right with it because they want to have a focused direction to know where these guys are going, what Kenny's going to do, what Don's going to do, what Sting is going to do. But isn't that what we always do? Let's leave it a bit vague for at least a couple of weeks. Don't rush it. Let it marinate. That's what I say to anybody who's watching this video. Let this marinate when it comes to Kenny, Don, and Sting. Let it take its time to develop. Don't rush it. Hopefully it'll all end up very good for AEW as well as for Impact Wrestling because Impact needs something. They need it. That's just me. You guys send it below. Um, you know, Kenny and Don came in a helicopter, almost forgot. That was kind of cool. Like the wrestlers of old, quote unquote, the... The, the, the wheeling and dealing, wanting and done, and I am Space Mountain of Ric Flair. Yes, I could have said Lex Luger, but I am going to say Ric Flair because that is how Kenny came off as, for me personally. Let's see, am I forgetting anything? And I'm sure I've forgotten something. We now had the final match of the night. We got MJF versus Cassidy. And I'm not going to lie here, I did not have any interest in this match because I don't care about... The dynamite diamond ring. It doesn't lead anywhere. It's a prop. And to be honest, if the I, I want to say this clearly, the match was not the problem. The inner circle being out there wasn't a problem. The best friends being out there and then asking for help in the back, and it became like a, a a lumberjack match. To be honest, that's what it really became like. I can say it being like a lumberjack match, I'm not 100% fond of it. It should have just been about whatever it was supposed to be. But the problem for me is this. I don't care about the dynamite diamond ring. I don't care about the concept. If it had the, the potential to lead to a championship, kind of like option C when it comes to impact wrestling or money in the bank, an equivalent, having the dynamite diamond ring Leads you to a title match. That's what it should have been for. It doesn't matter if it's for the TNT title or the world title. It's supposed to lead somewhere and it doesn't. And that's a major issue for me. As a prop, it does nothing for whoever holds it now. I'm, I'm sorry. Yes, MJF retains the ring, but what does it mean? What does it really give him? Nothing. And MGF doesn't need a prop like that now. They should have just ended it and just phased out the ring. Or if they have to keep the ring, they needed to say now the ring is an option for a title down the line next year. That is what it should have been for. And that's what it should have been stated. Now, was this a good show? Yeah, it was a good show. Everything was vague. And I, I know I didn't say anything about the women's section, like when it came to, well, I got to say that seeing Brandy getting an ass whooped by Jade and Nia Rose, yes, I couldn't me mention this, but I need to see how far it develops. I'm not going to really comment on it, but I am mentioning it here so no one thinks I forgot. You see what I say? If I forget something, it's because I don't want to mention it. <laughs> it was a good show, but everything was vague. Made on purpose to be vague because they want to try and build up some type of interest for AEW and, as a side note, Impact Wrestling. This is my point of view. You guys tell me below. Have a good day. 
Have a good night. Peace.